Welcome to the section on Descriptive Statistics. In this section we would first learn how to download open data from the web, then how to summarize our data numerically, and create informative plots, then learn how to detect and remove outliers. Hello and welcome to the first video of Volume 2 of the course. In this video we will explore again some concepts we presented in earlier videos to learn how to fully work with open data. In particular, we are going to download data from the NOAA website in order to create full database of environmental observation to use for analysis. In this video, we will once again download a full year of data from NOAA. However, we will also learn how to attach it to the coordinates of stations, which can be found in a different text file. Finally, we'll save our results so that later we can work with a cleaned dataset. Open Activity 1.1 in RStudio. After setting the working directory to where we would like to download the data from NOAA, we need to load the packages we need for this video, namely RC URL and XML. Then if we have not yet done it, we can create a new directory to place the tar file. Don't worry if you have already created the folder, because in that case the function dir creates will only return a warning. At this point we can download and decompress the tar file with data from the year 2015 with the same approach we explored in volume 1. Since we have already extracted the data from the tar file, we can delete it with the function unlink. Afterwards, we can use the function list files to create a list with all the files we downloaded, which, as you might remember from Volume 1, are in GZ compressed format. In Volume 1, after downloading them, we also opened one of these GZ files with the weather data from NOAA. You might remember, though, we have a lot of data in there, but the coordinates of the stations were not present. In fact, coordinates are provided in a separate text file available from this address. If we want to use these data, we need to attach the coordinates of the weather stations to the data. As you can see, the file with the coordinates is another file that can be difficult to import, since it cannot be read as a normal CSV or any other data tables. One solution could be to use the read lines function and then deal with the strings. However, it's better to use only as a last resort, since it implies a lot of work to extract usable data from the character strings. If we look closely to this file, we can see that after some descriptive text at the beginning, the remaining lines are all of the same length. Therefore, we can probably use the function read.fwf. As we learned in Volume 1, to use the function read.fwf, we need to specify the width of each column to import. And to do that, we have to count the characters from the text file. We only need to do it once though. As you can see here, I included two new options we have not explored before. The first is skip, which allows to skip some lines at the beginning of the file. In this case, we are skipping the first 21 rows of description. Then I included the option fill. You might have noticed by looking at the file that some columns were blank with no data. These are clearly NA that were written as white spaces. The option fill equals true will ensure that during import these spaces are filled with NAs. This will help us identify these missing values. At this point we can create a data.frame with only the information we actually need to this file, namely the IDs of the stations and WBAN and their coordinates. As you can see from the text file, the coordinates have a plus or minus sign at the front. This makes R treat them as factors, not numbers. To convert a factor to a numerical value, we need to first use the function paste to convert from factor to character string, and the function as numeric to create a number. As you can see from this little extract I put here some values are correctly identified with NA, while other stations missing coordinates are identified as zeros. There is a problem with data gathered from the web, and needs to serve as a lesson to always check our data very carefully before starting doing analysis on them. Otherwise we may end up wasting some valuable time. We can convert these zeros to NA with this simple line, where basically we are subsetting the data.frame, extracting only these values, and then assigning to them NAs. As you might remember from Volume 1, the NOAA files require some attention during import, because not every column has a label, and that confuses R. Therefore, even though we can still use the function read.table, we also need to skip the first row with the labels, and thus importing a data.frame without headers, with the option header equals force. This creates a data frame with columns named as v1, v2, and so on. To extract the data we need, we have to check the column number. For example, temperature is the column number 4, so v4, g point is number 6, so v6, and so on. 
In this example, I'm going to import temperature, G point, barometric pressure, V8, and wind speed, V14, and create yearly averages of these indexes for 2015. At this point, my objective is to import data from each GZ file and collect them into a data frame, because this way I'll be able to work on them very easily. To do that, we can use the function lapply we explored in volume one. Before doing that though, we need to create a custom function for each file. The function extract.noah, as you can see, takes one argument, which is the name of the file, then opens the file and creates an object named data. At this point, it creates a matrix with six columns. Option n col equals six. The first two columns are occupied by ID and WBAN while others are the mean values of the indexes we described before. Let's try this line using the data we imported above to see what happens. Now we can use lapply to create a matrix for each file. The object noah.list is not a matrix, but a list with around 13,000 entries, one for each file we downloaded. Each of these entries is a matrix with one row and six columns, similar to the ones we created above, but clearly with different values. We can transform this list into a data frame with this line that encapsulates several functions. The first is the function unlist, which basically extracts the numerical values from each entry in the object noah.list. At this point, we can arrange these values into a matrix again with the function matrix, specifying that we want six columns and to fill this matrix by row. This means that each entry will occupy its own row. Finally, we can use the function as data frame to convert this matrix into a data frame. In the next line, we can assign meaningful names to the columns so that later on we can identify them with ease. At this point, we have two data frames with columns named ID and WBAN, which holds identical values. We can merge these two data frame according to these columns with the function merge. This creates a new data frame with all the columns we need, including coordinates. Before saving our results, we first need to do some corrections. First, temperature data are distributed in Fahrenheit. We can simply transform them into Celsius with this simple conversion. Then, wind data are in knots, and to convert them into meters per second, we can simply multiply them by 0.514. Finally, once we're happy with our data, we can save them in CSV. Great job, guys. Now you know how to fully import open data in R. In this video, we learned how to import and fully clean a year of data from NOAA. 